go back to the year 2000. I just want to mention that in the year 2000, we had no on-street bike lanes on this campus. Um, so that from, from that point, right now we have about 70% of our roads have bike lanes. It's uh, it's quite a testament to what is now known as complete streets. You know, every time you put in a street or modify a street, it gets designed in such a way that it's safe for everybody. Um, so we're and all the, the pedestrian safety improvements too have happened along with the bike safety improvements. So it's it's pretty remarkable to, to do 70% in the 16 years. Um, you know, this bike shop has come along in the last, well, 10 years ago. Uh, we've got eight do-it-yourself bike repair stations now all over campus. Um, the last five were due to a donor, Rick Brown and his wife. Uh, he's not, he's up in Traverse City now, lucky guy. Uh, <laughs> We've got two secure bike parking stations on campus where you can swipe your card and get access to lock up your bike so it's not as prone to be stolen or messed with. Uh, we've got over 8,000 bike racks on campus that can park, well, we've got over 20,000 bikes is what we estimate. So uh, one way or another, they park them. Uh, we've got three quarters of our residence halls have indoor bike rooms, which is pretty, pretty amazing for especially winter time when students don't want to leave them out to get rusted all winter. Our, bike, our police department has uh, a large bike patrol. Uh, currently, it's eight people on that, on that patrol. IPF has, what, 15 bikes or so or more that they use for getting around campus and doing light work or going to visit a site. And our, camp, our transportation planning principle is, does anybody know it? Who's first? Pedestrians. Pedestrians. And then? Bicyclists, yeah, and then transit, and then other motor vehicles after that. So I think that kind of set things in motion when that was put in motion. Um, and finally, last fall, we, we were upgraded by the League of American Bicyclists to a silver status for Bike Friendly University. <laughs> that was uh, the culmination of quite a few hours of uh, the bike advisory. MSU has a bike advisory committee that is open. If people would like to join that, I'd be happy to tell you more about uh, being a part of that. We meet monthly and try to do, our current mission though is to go past gold and go straight for platinum. And we're calling that pedaling for platinum. So uh, if you'd like to join us and help us in that effort, we'd love to have you join us. Uh, with that, I'd like to turn it over to Gus Gosling who helped start things. In 2001 or so, I, have, I go in the north woods of Ontario and I often take my bike with me because from where I rent a cab into the nearest town, about 35 miles away, it's nice and hilly and I use those hills to see how I was doing. And uh, one year, the guy that rented the cabin next door owned a bike shop in Georgia. So we taught bikes and, he, and I, somehow we got on topic of abandoned bikes. Back then, an average of 12,000 bicycles would be abandoned on campus at this time of year. And he told me what they did in, at his university, whichever one it was in Georgia, they would take those abandoned bikes, they would paint them yellow, make sure they're safe, and they would just put them all over campus for people to use. I thought we'd do that here. I brought this, uh, this idea to uh, Terry Link, who was a big muck muck in, uh, in sustainability at the time. And, if Terry had a talent, I was to get other people to do things. <laughs> and all I wanted to do was give him the idea, but somehow he lassoed me into uh, getting this started. And it took a couple of years to, to get it. His first obstacle was we learned that we couldn't have a bike on campus without locking it to a uh, bike rack. And then we had to talk to the lawyers. And I really thought the lawyers would kill it. <laughs> but amazingly enough, the lawyers came back and said, bicycling is an everyday thing and they were not concerned that we were going to create a, a extra liability for the university. So for a few years we uh, a bunch of us and uh, Thomas Bowman and actually Tim was the very first volunteer to help us and a few other people joined us to uh, refurbish the bike and we did it. We started outside by the maintenance storage building under the awning and then we got to move to the basement of uh, Dem Hall as a matter of fact, we still refurbish bike in the basement of Dem Hall. And uh, then this young lady here was involved in the AUTTC, the All University Traffic and Transportation Committee. And she went to Fred Poston and told him about us. And Fred came to us and he said,
put a business proposal together and we'll see what we'll do. Somehow we fooled him and there's a bike shop. <laughs> so we have a bike shop today. So thank you, Diane. You know, Tim went through all of the improvements that have happened on this campus since, uh, since we started this, and, and we can't take credit for all of that. It's been an effort of many people trying to make this university more bicycle friendly. I have to tell you that I feel a lot of frustration at times because it does feel like it's a hard thing to do. You know, maybe Michigan, you know, the, the home of General Motors, Ford, Chrysler. Uh, we all have a car on the brain, as a matter of fact. I'm a mechanical engineer because when I was a teenager, I had, I called it gasoline on the brain. I wanted to take cars apart, put them back together, and uh, you know, somehow uh, didn't get to do that. Well, I still can take cars apart, put them back together, but the one part was I was going to build a car, go to Indy, win the race, be rich and famous the rest of my life. <laughs> didn't happen. I think it's because then I got perfume on the brain. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, I'm real pleased to the progress the university has made so far. We have a, a long ways to go. You heard Tim say we're peddling for platinum. You know, we want to skip right over gold on our next uh, application to the League of American Bicyclists and uh, get the platinum. We need everybody's help to help change the culture on campus that bicyclist is, bicycling is the best and easiest way to get around campus. And I get to uh, invite Mr. Hudson. He, he helped us at the beginning too. He, I think he was the first one. When we refurbished, refurbished bikes, we would rent them because they had to be locked. We couldn't just leave them for people to use. So we rented them to departments and Mike Hudson, uh, his assistant, John, what's your last name, John? Pedraza. John Pedraza was the first person to rent a bike from us. <laughs> Anyway, Mike's going to say a few words. Um, my wife happens to be blind as well as I, and we bought a tandem about uh, 15 years ago, and we're still fighting about who's going to ride in the front. But I'm, <laughs> I'm very grateful to know that if we get into any accidents, we've got a place to get our bike repaired here, and it's more accessible than ever now. So, uh, and I credit uh, Tim with uh, really running a first-class operation and always being willing to uh, take on a new idea and, and think about how... Uh, how bikes can be more available and accessible to everybody and so that's really how we got involved. Um, I remember we had a, um, we have a graduate of MSU, Aaron Scheides, who was blind and was the uh, president of the triathlon club and part of triathlon is uh, riding a bike and he was quite a biker and in fact he's working to qualify for the Paralympics this summer in Rio. Um, so he still carries MSU and MSU biking ideas with him wherever he goes. Um, so. This is an important thing for a lot of people in different ways and ways that you might not always think of. So when I saw Stephen Blosser, our assistive tech person, uh, repeatedly and recurrently uh, repairing bikes in our computer center, our tech lab, I said, this is kind of cool, but yet kind of troublesome. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as I remembered the bike shop down here, I said, I think we got to build a partnership with them. And we went to build a partnership because if you're a chair user on campus, you have many of the same accessories that a biker has. You've got wheels, you've got tubes, you've got... Uh, well, you got a foot plate and some other things. I said, wouldn't it be nice if we could uh, get Tim and, and the group involved in taking on a little responsibility for helping students when their chairs uh, need repairs? And um, he took it on with uh, great gusto, and then we realized we had some access challenges, and that became our mission, really, to work together to make this happen. And so the university, for oh, more than uh, 40 years, has had a fund they set aside for establishing greater accessibility across campus, really conquering architectural challenges. And we use that in strategic ways, places where we can make a big difference. And it requires several units working together, RCPD facilities planning, the vice president for finance and operations and administration. And I'm happy to say that this uh, project here became a beneficiary of the collaborative effort. So now Tim's got a, a bigger opportunity to reach more people and the bike center is going to become more and more important everywhere and to many more people. So I'm glad to be a part of it and we're looking forward to a bright future and uh, great to have that power door and that wheelchair ramp part of this now. So thank you.
many oh my goodness moments whenever I found out some of the stuff that was going on. We had a horrible record in terms of accidents, pedestrian car accidents, pedestrian bicycle accidents, bicycle car accidents, intersections and, and uh, roundabouts that were not people friendly. It was a, a huge mess and one of the things we did, and Diana will remember this, is we so we reinvigorated our committee, our AUTTC. We were also doing a lot of work with energy at the time, and uh, and we were very interested in uh, what we could do to <coughs> augment transportation mechanisms besides automobiles and bicycles, is obvious. And thank goodness there were a cadre of uh, uh, bicycle enthusiasts on the campus, and so we. Uh, we stumbled along for a while until we kind of married the, the walk with the how to do it. Gus came to see me and, and we talked about it and then he came back with a business plan. I, I have to tell you that in the 14 years I did this, there were very few business plans that ever worked out. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I thought, you know, the odds of this succeeding perhaps were not too big, but uh, the folks that were doing it were dedicated. And, we provided them some money each year to, to get going, and it took off and it grew it into this facility. Uh, and I think it really is amazing when I listen to uh, to where all of this has gone and in uh, the services. And I know I, I've had a lot of interaction with foreign students, and one of the things that you were doing with foreign students was they'd come to campus, they didn't have any transportation. That was before we got all the young Chinese students that were affluent and bought Maseratis, okay. But, uh, <laughs> and so Tim would rent them a bicycle, which was, uh, you know, maybe a relatively small thing uh, to some people, but it was a big thing to them. And uh, they were extremely happy with it. So, you know, this thing has just filled a wonderful niche on the campus. And I really uh, am very proud of all those people that had the vision to get started with it. And, and the going. I was glad I could facilitate it a little bit. Thank you. So technically bikes reports up to me, although I can't take any credit for this, but I do want to say it's really exciting to be involved with a, an activity that, you know, it promotes healthy living, sustainable, uses our carbon footprint, uh, and it provides a wonderful amenity for everybody who uses campus. I've more than once stopped here to here in my tires, and I've been really thankful that it's been here. So um, I just want to applaud everybody from Fred on forward who, who were involved with this and say thank you for, for this great uh, you know, resource for the university. And I do want to uh, then introduce my boss, Dr. Satish Utpa, who's uh, taken over for administrative, uh, uh, executive vice president for administrative services. And I wondered, Satish, if you wanted to say anything. I want to, but we are not talking about just bikes here. My, my engineering colleague will tell you that uh, bikes are remarkable contraptions. They are not only one of the simplest transportation devices, but they are also one of the most complex devices to uh, derive mathematical equations for. There are, so there are two sides of my brain that get excited when I look at a when I look at a bike. But we are not here to celebrate uh, bikes here. We are here to celebrate the bike shop. And I want to compliment Tim and Fred for making this all possible. Uh, because without your support, we wouldn't be in a situation that we are in today. We have moved from a simple operation to fix bikes to a, a facility that sells bikes, used bikes, new bikes, fixes bikes. And we also sell uh, thingies that we add on to bikes also, right? I mean, things like tires and so forth. So this is, this is an exciting thing. So I want to thank all of the people who made this possible, and I'm sure that many of you will be around for the next 10th uh, anniversary of celebration. So thank you all for making